We no afraid, we no see no one where we afraid of. We no afraid, we no see no one where we afraid of. Yeah, this is Everton Blender. And it's all about the young police from Jamaica. Seeing young police channel. Big up yourself. Everton Blender said that. We no afraid, we no see no one where we afraid of. Blessed love, Rastafari. Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers and Patreon members. At the channel, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Moving on to today's video so as we continue the journey this is part two of a nine part series of this um expose you know exposing um wilfred ratigan and its group um their motives um to destabilize the jamaican government using his training as a former fbi agent to cause problem in the country and division and to create that vacuum so that his political party it's a political gain and financial gain for him so you watch you listen and you decide this is part two of a nine part c in spanish town and i heard i heard a, a man talking with a special constable in a uniform and telling him about a shooting that happened the day the, the, the day before and mm -hmm. and claiming that he was there you know mm -hmm. and guess what everything that he was saying is is a lie because i was one i was I was one of the two policemen that was involved. Two policemen that were right, involved. Right. So P yeah, yeah, and I was I was so appalled that I have to even interject and tell the man say, You're a big man, you know, you must not tell lie on yourself. Because you weren't mm -hmm. there. You understand? Then he started to change the argument and he was like, Who are you? And I, and I told him who I was. You understand? That's how people are. So people I don't know what people get out of by telling lies on themselves. That's a, that is one of the main reasons why I do not go to these ex police association thing here. In America, mm -hmm. because the first because one I went to, everybody have a tall tale to tell. Yes, and it's just lies. What, what, mm -hmm. what kind of benefit do you get from talking about killing people? How that benefits you? That is not nothing mm -hmm. to boast about, because the people who are real, who are real killers in this world, they don't talk about it. They wear jacket and ties are in Washington D.C. as you know. They don't mm -hmm. talk about it. It's only stupid people who are ignorant talk about it because a life is a. Li it doesn't matter what how evil a person is. That is not nothing to boast about taking someone's life. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, one of the families I grew up with, and even when my dad had migrated, and we bought the um, property from them out at Albion Estates. You know who owned the property at Albion Estates, right? No, I don't know either. The spall in them out in St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. They oh. developed that. You're talking Tony Spalling? Tony Spalling? Tony and Winston. Winston. Mm -hmm. Yes, both of them and are. It was there. Winston who I'd gotten into some trouble. Winston talked me into, hey, you know, you need to not get yourself involved anymore. And you need to go ahead and your parents want you up there in Brooklyn. You need to go ahead and go up to Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, 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 I was privy to a lot of things because of my dad, right? I was in the Kelly Corps, I was a park camp, I, you know, everybody so what, so, so what you're saying, that your, your father, someone who served in the military, was sharing, yeah. was sharing confidential it, it, information it, it, with you? Yeah. So, but that's, so, that's, but that, that is not ethic, ethics, man. For your father to be sharing confidential things about the the, the Jamaica, the, uh, what's happening in Jamaica. And uh, he don't share it with me, you know. When his people come to the house, mm -hmm. I always make sure 
I was nearby when the man start drink them liquor mm -hmm. and talk. Oh, you talk. Okay, you talking. Okay, you talking the truth. The thing that speak, people speak the truth. Yeah, yeah. You you overhear the conversation. Mm -hmm. oh, right? Okay. You know, I mean, we saw politicians come to the house. Max Carey and a um, uh, couple of the others. Them and and, and we, we we were there in Barbican near near uh, Dulwich Drive. Um, I used to run into Michael and his brother at the Texaco station out there at Grand Spring mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And he knew us because we used to walk to church down to Holy Cross and we used to cut through drum beer. And sometimes they give us a ride down and then up on the other side, J.P. Giles and Robin Giles. We, we were at St. George's College together. Mm -hmm. So you have PNP down to the south and you have the uh, GLP up to the north that knew the family mm -hmm. and we had uh, one acre piece of land right there 119 Barbican Road mm -hmm. and you know every time you turn around there was since I leave there's been violence at that yard to where they call it 119 policeman live in the yard and 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 couple of detectives from Content Spring. I knew them. I talked to them on the phone when stuff happened down there and they tell me what happened. Their cousin get shot dead in the yard. You know. So it's not like we were from the privileged side of Barbican. Mm -hmm. We were right there near Grand Spring. You had the Nelson, then you had the Taylors, then you had the Reeds. And then you have the McLeans. So I can, you know, them four families had compounds all the way down to the end. And that's a lane that, that separated us from the upper crust mm -hmm. areas that are going up, you know, uh, Barbican Road. And, you know, when, when you when you grow up in that environment, and we played football there, and we played football up at Shortwood. And I, I knew all the big name people then. Mm -hmm. St. George's College, and, you know, I knew all of them, them guys that come out of them uh, up, uptown homes, and some of the guys them come out and out at Trenchtown and all the other places that came to George's as well. They can play football. I was in Jamaica under 15, then under 19. Mm -hmm. Played for Constant Spring, Golden Aces. Um, played Swallowfield mm -hmm. and City Williams. And played um, when when Golden Aces made Division um, Division 1, Major League, they mm -hmm. call it then. Right? So, I could go anywhere because they knew me as a footballer. Mm -hmm. Played in Tivoli, played Trenchtown, Railway. I brought Frank Brown up to uh, play for um, Golden Aces when we made um, Division One. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've unified a lot of um, people mm -hmm. at a community uh, work, development work, even after I left the island. Right? I'm the guy that brought the Project Star program down to Jamaica mm -hmm. because I knew using sports we would do community building mm -hmm. and we could get the private sector put money into it could get the police department and the military provide some of their best people as trainers mm -hmm. with the, the trainer program train them to have soccer coaches, uh, football, or whatever you want to call it. All kinds of stuff, man. Uh, cricket, um, you know, basketball. And, and, and the idea was once you bring them in and you brought young people together, you would do community building exercises because these were in fact um, team building exercises. You are on an actual team. Where did I get that from? I learned that from Captain Peter Whittingham, he used to be the gang and homicide division chief at LAPD. 
so 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 what's the problem? So what's the so what's the problem now with with your group? The um, we call it the diaspora group. What's what's going on with you guys? Well, we are we are Ratigan. We we just forced him to give up the group, mm-hmm. and we are now. He wants the the part with the money. He wants to make a legal defense foundation. He wants he wants the money. Yeah. Well, we we let him have it because that that collection of money was a lot of cash, and I had my suspicions as where the cash might be coming from. We, so, right. we, so where you think the cash is coming? Because where you think the cash is coming from? Well, you know, PNP had a strong interest, mm-hmm. um, especially with uh, our two the, the the gentleman you discussed a while ago. Oh, ugly some. The t- three three people started this um, this investment bank, mm-hmm. and two of them is diehard PNP. Who, who? One is the leader of the PNT and the other one back him up. Oh, you're, ta- oh, you're right. talking. Oh, you're talking. Baby Trump and um, Bunting. Yeah, there you go. Mm. There you go. So they are the one. So they are the one that contributed the money to this um, to this movement. Yeah, that's what I believe. So, oh, so, oh. That's what I. Be- but, but you see, Ratigan himself ran the bank account. He did not make me privy to anything. He claimed I had. Privilege. No, the only thing I had was I opened the proton mail account mm-hmm. that that showed the money that come in from um, Zell, mm-hmm. right? I couldn't tell anything else about the bank account, and I kept saying to him, "We gotta follow IRS rules." Because my brother is a CPA, and he, treat, he keeps telling me, "Don't get drawn into anything where they're not following IRS rules." True. For a year and a half, I've been on this man to follow IRS rule, to have the donors list, to Ex- acknowledge people's contributions, to do all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And he refused. So, when he finally kicked me out after the the problems we had in um, Canada, we went lonesome. Oh, so is the, so 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 you are the one that start talking about the missing funds from the accounts and stuff like that. I am the one that talk about. Uh, I won't call it missing funds. Just call it uh, bad bookkeeping. Mm-hmm. No, then no, no, no. Look here, that <laughs> that is so. Uh, 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 look here, look here. That, 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 you can, you can, you can you analyze can, some what you're saying, it, but yeah, but like, as me, you know, I just. I just call a spade a spade. I don't sugarcoat things. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not sugarcoating. No, things. but no, but you you just. I, I wrote a letter to IRS explaining. Oh, okay, so them. just just in case anything that you are not culpable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, 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 look, if you don't tell me before you call a meeting on the board, I don't know what the meeting is about mm-hmm. till I get a call, and then after the meeting, you don't give me the minutes to approve. Right? I don't know what's being written. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything. So I do what I need to do to protect myself. You know? So we're waiting now to see if the hammer is going to fall. So because okay, so 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 the split, so the split now within the split now within the um, the organization. It uh, so you you and Rupert Francis are, are being kicked out of the the group. Oh, we we no 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 no. Are we, you vacated? The call to action group. We have the Global Jamaica Diaspora Council, and we have the Jamaica Diaspora Crime Intervention Prevention Task Force. Okay, so what so so uh, so what are the what what are the role of these organization? What's what's the, what's what's the, the end goal? The role of the organization was designed mm-hmm. against. Well, it was first design was to train Jamaican police. We got sixty something. US train Jamaican state, police to do what? Canadian police in our organization. No, to train Jamaican police to do what? To, well, first of all, undercover work, and the next one was uh, developing CIs. All right, but, but, oh, you mean, uh, uh, but look here, I was a detective, you know. Okay. So in terms and of... how wh- did you guys develop CIs as a detective? Oh, co- confidential informant, I see people in my community do it. 
Is the same yeah, people? Is the same people within the community is gonna uh, provide information to you, and it's based on how you treat people. That people's people will um, show show you that um, they have the greatest amount of respect for you as a detective, and they will share information with you. I have in uh, look here. I have left the police for um, decades now, and I have still people. I have people um, who used to come in, who used to share information with me. Their grandchildren right. now are sharing it with me now because of that confidentiality and that trust that I have built up with them when I was serving. That they now are sharing information. The grandchildren are sharing because they have that amount of trust in me because of what their grandparents have told them about me. Because not one of my informants have ever been exposed. I've been killed or anything like that. None. Well, well, well okay. I take my hat off to you. Right? Yes. But this Mm -hmm. There are other officers who have exposed people either directly or inadvertently. Yes. And and I have some high ranking folks that, that, that disclose a lot of stuff to me. Mm -hmm. And so, and of course, you know, when I'm sitting up where I used to sit and I go into certain systems and I can see all the chicanery going on mm -hmm. amongst politicians. I can see how things went down. I was in the Army Special Operations in Panama mm -hmm. when the last was going down in 74, 75, and afterwards. So I've always had my eyes on the ball, so to speak. So mm -hmm. when I retired after 24 years in the Army, I went... No, no, you, I, you, you did 24 years in the Army, we were in the United States? In the United States, yes. So at what rank? At what rank? Yeah, you left the. You, you, um, you retired. Master, master sergeant, oh. army master. Okay, so you're a retired military mentor. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then after that, you, you did 16 years as a CIA analyst. Right. Right. So you still have a secure. So, so how many years now since? Um, so you were a private contractor. Yes, I left. Well, our last contract I was with that. And, and you stay in place, but you just change your contractor mm -hmm. that pay you. That's basically all it is. Booz Allen for seven years, General Dynamics for for three, um, Northrop Grumman for three, mm -hmm. and that I means good cover. You know, the bottom line is you are with that agency. Mm -hmm. and all the exposure you get you have coverage right so all you end up so all you end up in an organization with Ratigan well Ratigan is the one who was pushing a lot of things right? like pushing like a lot of things like what L like how do you do uh interference in corrupt go undertakings by the government. And so we thought, okay, this guy appears legit. Yeah, yep. But I knew about Ratigan long before he even came and joined us. Yes, because if, if you had done your research, you had seen where... If ja I uh, did if my you, research, brother, trust me. Yes, but you, you had, you'd have seen that where the, um, the George W. Bush administration had zero trust in this man, and he's a Jamaican. They had seen him, the Americans had seen him as a, as a traitor to yeah. America. If this man, it was, as an FBI agent, was seen as a traitor by his, by his adopted government, why would you think that he would be loyal to anyone? If he's seen as a traitor by the commander-in-chief, as a traitor to America during 9-11, why, why would you trust someone like that as someone who served in the military? I served in the military two years, you know. I, 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 I'm going to tell you this. I had received radical number. You know, a three, I, I, I did not even save the number. You know. A woman sent me his number you know, to call him. You know. I told her not I'm going to call I'm not going to call him. Because I have listened to this man. And to me, this man has zero ounce of integrity. Or even shame. This man is a, no, is a narcissist. The man is a notorious liar. This man has nothing good to offer to Jamaican people. More than this man is just, I see him as a scammer. Well... It, it's look. I was not gonna just arbitrarily go ahead and start saying things 
because I knew of his case. Yes. I knew of him winning and then the various um, appeals. Mm -hmm. And I knew what they thought of him, where I worked, right? Then if you know, if, if, boy, if you know all of this, why you get involved with him then? I would stay far from him because after 9-11, everyone in America, you coalesce with the American government. You don't, you don't side with the enemy against America. Whether you, they, whether, whether you believe they, they, in American they, foreign they, policy or not, you're working for them. Yeah, but the fact is this. When we went to Jamaica and did our, our briefing, Dr. Francis introduced me to him down there as a guy who had applied to be police commissioner. Okay, and and I, I have seen where you said that Dr. Francis have nothing to do with it. You know, uh, you, you know, you know who you know who is behind it. Why he did not um, get appointed? It was the same Peter Bunting, because they use the same audacia from the 9/11 thing, from the same thing um, with the Saudi Arabia incident. And they said they don't. Um, they said they can't trust him because if he had betrayed the American government, then he's gonna. They can't trust him down there in Jamaica. So when he's pointing finger to Dr. Rupert Francis. This man is a real dummy. It was CM Peter Bunting. The CM PMP they said I can't trust him either. Because Peter has a lot of connections even with the agency. Yes. They no, said I can't yeah, trust yeah. him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am a weird brother. I can say, you know, the the events that that allowed us to call us was the Jamaican Diaspora Crime Intervention Prevention Task Force. Yes, but that's what I'm asking. So, you know, what, what, what was the core? What was the core principle behind behind this thing? Right? To change the detective. The core principle to, to was do what? that the, in order to do intervention and prevention of crime in Jamaica, we had to look at the training that the police had. We had to look at the various departments um, from Mocha to. Um, with the other one, the um, Fitzbilly uh, group there. Mm, and um, we, we looked at them and we looked at how they trained and how they were prepared to do their, their jobs. We knew that you had to have compartmentation, which was completely broken down mm. in the JCF. We tried to bring in, I brought in an expert, the guy who takes care of which, DOJ. Which, 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 ex, which expert is that? A, a, major, a guy who retired as major and has his own multi-million dollar cyber security firm now. Who, 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 who is that? You have Mark Shields? No man, no man. This guy put Mark Shields to shame. This guy is um, Beckford, Chris Beckford. Mm -hmm. He's a Jamaican. And so Chris and I went down there and we briefed uh, Anderson and and the, the rest of the um, security team. And we told them about enterprise architecture. We said we can set up the enterprise architecture not just within the JCF or the National Security um um, uh, ministry, we could do it for the entire government. Okay, so before then you go any further, before you go any further, but hold on, but like before, the ministry. hold on, before you go any further, so this enterprise architecture, this is a private entity, right? No, 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 no. Enterprise architecture is the means. It's it's uh, your means of communicating. Yes, I know, I know, but I'm talking about you guys coming in with it. If it's gonna be a I'm not talking about the enterprise architecture per se. I'm talking about the person who's going to run this thing. If you guys are coming in as a private entity. The, but put it this way. They were talking to Northrop. Not Northrop. They were talking to what the big other big one. And Lockheed Martin. Yeah, that's why I'm and asking. You know, so, so, this, so, this, so this is a private... We're not talking about the it enterprise. Is, it, it is a private because so, government uh, okay, don't uh, have the facilitation so this is, for it. So this is... US so hold well, on, so this is lobbying the Jamaican government to make money? No, 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 no. When you so, have... Uh, so uh, let me ask Lockheed it, let, 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 me, let me ask it. So you're let saying... Hold well, on, well, so let me ask it. So Lockheed Martin is going to do this for free? 
No, Lockheed Martin. But that's, what I'm asking, that's why I'm asking you. If it's a forty million, Lockheed Martin as well as Microsoft. So that's, a, that's why I'm asking if they're gonna do it for free. No, so I that's can what I'm show asking. Then I lobby them. I lobby the government to make money. Can send you the white paper that we did. We did it on the at the request of the uh, CIO at the Ministry of MSET. Ministry of Science, Energy, Technology. Yeah, but right? well, that Canadian guy they brought in, the man is an engineer. He don't know, he know a little bit about um, uh, the the architecture, but he didn't know exactly what to do. Yeah, but, but I, I, I am not talking about that, but I'm talking about for them to lobby in the government is to make money. Because it's not free. Listen, when you take a project that is valued by the big boys at 30 to 40 million US dollars or more and you tell the government that you will set it up for them for 500,000 US dollars and you will ensure that mm -hmm. everything is functioning the way they want it to function yeah, then, then, then they are lobbying the government to make money. So it's a, it's an it's. This is them. Five hundred thousand US dollars is not money making in this enterprise architecture business. Mm. It is setting it up and having the government themselves manage it. We offer them a security operations center. We offer them. Uh, uh, fusion center in Cornwall, Middlesex, and sorry, the yeah, but, but, but it's still it, whether or not, whether or not, if it's not, it's still it's lobbying the government to make money. No matter how small it is, it's still to make money. You, the, the, Chris would have twenty and thirty and forty million dollar projects. Yes, so you know, so Chris that's what that's what, that's what I'm in, saying. So. In Jamaica. $500,000 if needed that for the equipment that was needed mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you understand what I'm trying to tell you now yes I understand what you're saying we brought in all the equipment all the training right and we would we, can, we know Jamaican folks mm -hmm. are smart when it comes to cyber we know there are lots of unemployed uh, computer science people out of UWI and UTEC Mm -hmm. And and uh, the other one in Mandeville, uh, NCU. Mm -hmm. We're going to resolve that problem for them, putting everybody to work. Mm -hmm. Right? So we were prepared to do the entire architecture system throughout the whole island. And then the police, the military would have had methodologies of communicating with um, uh, the cyber um, uh, encryption that they needed, right? To where not even the U.S. government could unscramble that thing. <laughs> no, hey, look here. Um, uh, in key, look here. You know what? what, what <laughs> Keep in mind the guy that's hey, look, hey, look here. Hold on, hold on. Hey, look here. Look, uh, look here. Look here, you, know, um, you and I, you and I know that is, you know, that's, you know, that that that's, that is not, that is not even real, realistic, because there's no system in the world that the American cannot infiltrate, and you and I know that. You understand what I'm saying? So to say, yeah, to but, say that but, no, but, well, but, no, well, no, well, no, to say that the Americans are going to supply things to Jamaica and them cannot infiltrate it, infiltrate it. Uncle Adam would have believed something like that. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah, no, you, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm telling you what we were prepared to do. Yeah, but there's uh, there's and, all these all these all these cracks in anything. Look at you understand what I'm saying. Look right, at Microsoft. So, so we know NSA would have that capability. We know Cybercom would have. Yeah, that so no, you know, so when you, 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 you have to understand that so you know why why would the American government need to to break anything that the Jamaican government had if it were working? properly what? and if we can we ask them setting these things up would have an american element to it all right so let me let me all right let me all right, let me we got to talk about with the police all right the police force itself you know police as well as the army well well i, I i'm speaking i am speaking from my i'm speaking from my i'm speaking from my uh, my vantage point as a farmer detective 
the police force right. itself has been dismantled, you know. It's been dismantled by both by the PMP government. In um, when I'm talking about, I'm not talking about when I was there when they start the dismantling of the police force. We have a, we have a thing they call special branch, which is equivalent to the, the number one spy agency in Jamaica. The PMP the PMP criminal organization dismantled it in 2011. Yeah, in 2011, because of the Trafigura, the Trafigura um, scandal, because it was a special branch that gave Bruce Golden the information that Colin Campbell, um, Colin Campbell, had collected the bribe from the overseas company, from the company in Europe, the 33 million dollar. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And they, and they dismantled it along with Owen Ellington. Owen Ellington is the most corrupt politician, you know. Um, co sorry, corrupt, the most corrupt commissioner of police. But now he's... Yep. he's well, he, he, even as a senior superintendent. No, man, he's corrupt long time, man. He's born corrupt, man. He, but this, well, I'm trying to tell you, we are reporting that the man pull up in a community, pop him car trunk, and was handing out weapons. Oh, Owen Ellington? Yeah. Where, where, yeah. Which, which community was that? I, I can't recall right now, but but this is a conversation I was having with the former head of MIU. Which, and which, which, which person of MIU you talking? Um, you were talking with about that when he was seen you as know, superintendent of police. No, Barclay. But that, okay, and he was so. Uh, if he went to a community and handing out weapons to people mm -hmm. as a senior, so so who who. To who, who were these men that he was handing these weapons up? Are they affiliated to any political party or anything like that? Political party, yes. Wh which, so political, who, who which, pol which political party? Political, the which political party that he was handing out weapons to men? From, from which political party? Listen, I cannot recall no man a two political party of jamaica you have pmp and labor right which one of them he was issuing issuing firearms to it appears it was with the pnp at the time okay all right i know what you're talking about and that information is not true i i, I look here i am not defending you i don't like who it is i'm a corrupt you know i am telling you i the information is that i am going to tell you from because I was serving in the police force then. It was his brother-in-law. There, there was a senior superintendent there that was a part of the conversation. So when him and the colonel was, was reminiscing mm -hmm. about all the police officers that handled weapons. I've come to the end of part two of this nine-part series. Um, exposing um, Wilfred Rattigan and, you know, and his clique. Um, their, you know motive is to um to destabilize jamaica yes destabilize the jamaican government and exploiting the diaspora for personal and political gain yeah so this revelation about his statics you know it's really damning so these protests are not about genuine change are improving life they are carefully carefully orchestrated campaign designed to weaken jamaica's leadership manipulate its people and so division so this man is not for the Jamaican people. He is an enemy of the Jamaican people, as I've stated before. So now that the chicken come to, to roost, so we have to let you, the Jamaican people, you will watch, you will listen, and you decide. So part three of nine will be coming up shortly. Same time. As we said, as we said if you want to see the entire thing, all you have to do is subscribe to Patreon. And you'll be able to see the video, listen to the video in its entirety. And you'll hear it for yourself. So you have yourself a beautiful day. Jamaica, Young Police Channel, out.